Diane Sawyer was America's junior miss in 1963, and boy, has she come a long way <laughs> since then. She will be joining us early in the morning with Charles Corral from the CBS Morning News. Congratulations. Thank you very much. What time are you going to have to get up now, Diane, to do that? I think I'm going to sleep in and get up at 2 in the morning instead of 1.30, as everyone else does. Will, will you have to get up at 2? Yeah. What time are you going to have to go to bed? Have you thought about that? I have thought about that. I probably go to bed about 7 o'clock, which means that I'll have lovely candlelit dinners at about 3 in the afternoon with anyone who's willing to have candlelit dinner at that hour. You're going to miss all of the evening things. Yes, I am. But, um, you know, there are compensations. There'll be no lines at the movie theaters whenever I get That's off work. That's true. No yeah. one signed up for the tennis court. No one to play with, either. Yes. <laughs> but at least there'll be no lines. How do you account for the rediscovery, if I can call it that, of Charles Corralt? We saw him all those years on the road, and he's mm -hmm. always been a jewel, a little gem. Everybody's known it. That's right. But then things started to snowball, and now he's on six days a week. Mm-hmm. You know, I, was, I wasn't at CBS for a lot of the period that you're talking about. If there were a dark age for Charles Corral, I don't know what accounted for it, except that I think everyone has periods where they sort of withdraw and regroup and then come back again. Times change, sociology changes, and the temperament of the American public changes in terms of the people they like and don't like. It is true that he is really one of the gift, most gifted men in the business, and the kind of gifts that he has are so enduring that I can't believe he was ever really eclipsed, if that were the case, because they are the gifts of precision in writing, of precision in thought, and a lovely simplicity that oftentimes, unless you're listening very carefully, mm -hmm. masks that wonderful, sophisticated mind of his. Mm -hmm. He is really impressive. Mm -hmm. And not only that, the, the affable humanity yes. is real. Yes. Diane worked very closely, very intimately, with uh, former president, president Richard Nixon in the development of his memoirs. Right. Will you tell us how you met him? I met him. I'll tell you exactly how I met him because it is probably logged in the Secret Service someplace. <laughs> I went to the White House to work in the White House. I had been in local television for a couple of years and felt undernourished, felt that there were other things that I ought to learn about, something about the other side. So I went to Washington to work in the White House, and I had been there about two weeks, and I had some scissors, and I was going to run down into a copy room on the ground floor of the White House and retrieve some material. And I was racing along, whistling, and carrying my scissors, and I rounded a corner, and there is the President and the Secret Service, and I literally just flattened it, just like this, my arms outstretched. He goes back like this into the arms of the Secret Service, who are catching him and me. And he looked up and he said, you know, you could get hurt this way. <laughs> <laughs> if you could be killed, they would whip out their machetes and their machine guns right. and let you he have it. utterly charming about it. Do you feel that as a, as a female, that men will be more receptive to talking to you in an investigative news story than they would be to men, to other men? I felt, uh, and I feel really strongly about this, and I've had a lot of experience with it, that, for instance, at the State Department, I was the only woman broadcaster at the State Department, the network broadcaster at the State Department. Consequently, I was, e my name was easier to remember. I mm. wasn't another person. Mm -hmm. If I had had bunny ears on, <laughs> or if I had had four noses, I would probably have been equally as easy to remember. I don't think it was just a function of being a woman. So that it means the first time you put in the call, maybe they'll recognize your name, and maybe they'll return it because they recognize your name. If you're not good, and if you're not asking them stimulating questions, and if they think you don't know your subject matter, they can tell very quickly, and they won't return the second call. Mm -hmm. So that it, in, it equalizes very quickly. Yeah. And you graduated in English. That's right. Were you, planning, were you planning this route down the road to go into news? Not really. I had, I had some vague notions of what I wanted to do. I, wanted, I knew I was curious, and I wanted to satisfy my curiosity. I knew I liked to write. And I like to communicate directly. Mm -hmm. And all those components together in a rather elusive way led me into television. It wasn't that I plotted a career yeah. in television. It was like that I followed my natural interests rather than following any plan. But now, so brief, the, the points that get on the air, the stories that get on the air, 20 seconds or 30 mm -hmm. seconds, how can you do justice to a story in that amount of time? You just have to realize, you have to take television for what it is. It, if you'll spend your life in agony with ulcers if you're trying to compete with what a newspaper story can do, because you do only have 30 seconds sometimes. But for what it is, and television is a very good way of abbreviating 
what people can then learn more about from newspapers. It's very useful. And to be, there's a lovely thrill when you've chosen the right word that sums up in one second what other people would have had to say in three seconds. A picture is worth a thousand words. A picture. May we use that? The frightening thing is uh, the statistics show that 67% of people are getting their news from television. That's right. All the news. Oh, yeah, I know it. This means they're not reading the newspaper or the that's follow up right. stories in the various and sundry magazines. That's and right. that's kind of scary. Could the network? Could and should the network go to an hour in news to just give a little more, a little more time? Oh, I think the networks will go to an hour in news as time goes on. I think, for one thing, the economics are mm -hmm. evolving in that direction. I think they will go to it on principle, too. Even when it does go to it, though, I just don't think that we can, I think it's an educative process. And I think as the American public becomes more sophisticated, in part because of more of what they're learning from television, they'll also become sophisticated enough to know that they've got to go to newspapers, too. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you can force it overnight. I really don't. You know, the attention span on television, this is my own instinct, but that it's difficult to hold attention span on television. It's difficult to hold mine mm -hmm. for a long and sometimes intricate presentation of something that's difficult to follow on television. So you're bound by the natural medium. And as I say, for what it does, television does it very mm -hmm. well. Television news, I think, does it very and well. And Barbara Walters broke new ground for all of us, really. Mm -hmm. But do you think she's worth a million dollars a year? Oh, yeah. I do. <laughs> I'm a big fan of hers. I think she's terrific. You know, the salaries of a lot of news people have become wildly escalated, mm -hmm. and the news people who are making them are the first to be embarrassed about it. But it's also true. I mean, to that extent, it's not a perversion or corruption of Barbara Walters that she makes that amount of money. It's the economics of television news that make it possible to pay her that amount of money. And it's, she's really a, a function of the economics mm -hmm. and not a function of her of voracious demands on her part. Mm -hmm. Well, we are going to be joining you early in the morning. Very early. Get your coffee out. And yes, <laughs> we'll be watching her here bright and early with Charles Corral. She, of course, is Diane Sawyer, a charming, delightful, intelligent, very welcome addition to the show. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Diane Sawyer, we'll be right back in the show right after this word. <laughs>